So yeah, um, I just have a quick talk, so I will try to talk as, as low as possible <laughs> and take too much, too much time as I can. Uh, so, uh, contents. Uh, I will just briefly introduce you to what we do in Enterom because it, it's interesting and relevant for the way we used and we needed to use Nextflow. Um, then I will focus a bit on our experience from, from going from zero to full Nextflow uh, because actually in, in the company we were like adopted Nextflow a year and a half ago. But of course I, I knew Paolo since uh, a long time. A uh, few lessons learned and then a, uh, small spoiler alert, there have been some pain here and there. So in my title I put no pain, but it's, it's not true. But <laughs> otherwise, Paolo will not have accepted my abstract, I think. <laughs> so uh, what we do in Enterom, um, we're, if we are, I can say, a pretty successful small company. The company started six years ago. Uh, I joined the company in 2016. Now we are 50 full-time employees, it's a biotech company, and we are focusing on uh, developing diagnostics and therapeutics out of the human gut microbiome. Um, and we had developed some very, very nice uh, strategic partnership with big pharma companies, which are more and more interesting in exploring and exploiting the human gut microbiome information. And um, what we do in terms of metagenomics and bioinformatics is really focused on these two aspects, these two axes, I, I would say. So the quantitative metagenomics, which basically start from uh, interrogating the human metagenomic data and composition of a large cohort of, uh, of uh, clinical patients and try to, to determine if there are signatures or relevant biomarkers we can use as, a, as a predictive tools or that we can use to stratify our patients. And then, of course, we have this huge access on functional metagenomics where we try to focus on, on uh, identify uh, new targets for, uh, for drug design uh, in the human gut microbiome and to derive new possible candidates from the human gut microbiome itself, especially uh, metabolites, peptides, and some new class of antigens, uh, microbiome-derived antigens we are using and testing in uh, um, new uh, oncology and immune oncology programs that we have. So what we do in bioinformatics at Enterome is basically these. So we try to uh, focus on quantitative metagenomics, in silicon functional metagenomics, and precision microbial analysis when we just try to get down to single microbiome and single bacteria out of the, the mix. And we try to um, extract as much as data and knowledge possible to, to, to nourish and to, to uh, fill all these uh, uh, drug discovery programs that we have. Uh, in terms of more tech details, so in, 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 in Enterom we have several production bioinformatics pipelines that we run uh, routinely, some others that are more in development stage. Uh, many of these pipelines have been qualified and are compliant with uh, the, the ISO norm, uh, since it was something that we needed to do in order to, to work well and to fit well with some, some, fun com some of our partners and pharma companies. And in 2017, we have done this huge effort of translating our pipeline in Nextflow, which has paid off, of course. Uh, and in the same year, uh, we decided to move completely onto the cloud. So we are 100% on, on, on AWS, and we use AWS Batch uh, every day routinely is our main service there. Um, so we do not have any, any physical server anymore, which has been kind of a, an interesting journey. Uh, we tend to run some large workflows compared to the, to the size of the company uh, and at the, at the peak usage one single workflow can easily consume out of 15k, 10k CPUs constantly for a few hours which is it's not bad considering, the, the, uh, the, that, considering that we are not Sanger. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and as I was mentioning, our pipelines are principally focused on microbiome profiling from multiple cortical samples and functional met metagenomic, which is the most uh, computational demanding uh, part, of course. Uh, so a year and a half ago, wh why Nextflow? So we, we decided uh, that we needed to have an effective way to manage all our, our pipelines and, and to make them reproducible across, across different users. So uh, even internally, we, we have even in a small group, even in small teams, we, we had that, that uh, uh, not a problem, but we had that, that issue to address. And uh, from the other side, we needed uh, uh, something simple, but powerful to describe our workflows, something that could, could be easily readable, not, uh, not too much complex. And just to make the point clear, we didn't want a language or a specification 
uh, to describe workflows, we wanted a functioning framework uh, that could unite under the same roof a description of workflows and execution. And at the time, and I think still today, uh, Nextflow is the most mature one in this, in this, in this regard. Uh, in the company, we're, we were not just running you know, bash scripts alone. We already had pipeline managers, but they, they were both limited in workflows descriptions and in the, in the executions backend that they supported. And since we, we decided to move in the, in the same year to the cloud, we needed, to, to, we needed something completely different. So, uh, so all started with this, basically. Uh, that was August. So if, you, if you're familiar with European and, and France, especially, we are busy in Paris, the 2 of August is a very, very lonely period of the year to be in the office and working. Uh, we were trying to, to, to implement, we were stepping, we were, mid we were just you know, moving the first step into the cloud and I was really, you know, uh, I had my hand banging on the wall for a few days, trying to, to, to make the things working on the cloud and on the AWS. And so, yeah, exactly, this is, this, this is CWL is watching you. Uh, <laughs> and so I just tweeted that. And, and of course, I mean, the, the reaction there, the first reaction was that I've been trolled by Nextflow guys. <laughs> they say, hey, maybe, you know, there is Nextflow, you could try that. And, and Paolo, of course, trolled it back. And, and I just, like, stopped the discussion there because I say, yeah, I know, and Nextflow is very cool, it's nice, but we, have, uh, we, we want to use AWS Batch. And we, there were no support for the AWS Batch back then. And so from this, we started discussing with Paolo, and of, instead of you know, uh, being lonely and try to, to reinvent the wheel all alone in, in our team, we decided to contribute back to Nextflow and to, to push and promote a bit and the, um, the adoption of uh, Nextflow uh, and uh, the, the support for Nextflow and the AWS Batch. So AWS Batch is, is really a nice, really nice service. Uh, we basically automates completely uh, your HPC infrastructure. It's based on Docker. Uh, you just basically have, I mean, what you do is here. So all the rest is handled by AWS and Nextflow. And so you just submit jobs and automatically your, the service takes care of spinning up AC2 instances for you, which are, um, you know, how can I say, carefully chosen in size, in resources for the type of jobs and for the amount of jobs you submit, which per se is, is, is a nice thing. And then, of, oops, sorry. And then, of course, um, everything is, you know, uh, dependent on S3 for moving the data back and forth. And here is really the part where Nextflow uh, help the most in, uh, you know, moving from from your lo local submission to to the cloud. Uh, so patch has been has been available since uh, since June 2017. So then that, that was the reason why in August I was trying to to, to make things uh, working on on batch and uh, Nextflow supported since, since November of that year. And it has been really, really, really a game changer for, for, for us at least, uh, because uh, it has you know, simplified our life enormously and tremendously. Uh, and definitely is one of the key components of our agile approach to pipelines, because we don't have to care anymore about the infrastructure and, and, and the, the management of this, the, the infrastructure. Uh, Unfortunately, it has a sim similar learning curve as Nextflow, uh, which I, I think you're pretty familiar with the, the, the learning curve of Nextflow. Uh, so WTF stands for working towards fun, uh, which, is, which is the typical you know, beginning phase. Uh, and, and for us, at least, it has been like that, Nextflow and, and Batch. So you have this, this initial moment where you say, oh, God, this will take like years to, to manage. And then it's not that bad. And then you start to familiarize with the concept, the key concept, and the setup, the configuration, etc. And you know, after two, three months, you find you find you find yourself in this in this nice part of the curve where you say, "Oh God, how we how we could have lived without it before." Mm -hmm. And it's, for us, it's really true. So talking a bit of agile uh, things uh, and why why I decided a bit to focus the, the title of the the, uh, the sorry the, this is quick. Talk <laughs> on, 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 on agile things. So uh, many of you are, are I think, are, are very aware of agile development. M maybe some are is not. But since it's a quick talk, uh, I, I needed to, to, to find something you know very very short to describe um, agile development. And for me, agile agile development is is this basically. 
So it's, it's, if you do agile development, you should be familiar with that. Is I mean, agile development is live, die, repeat. If you haven't seen the movie, go see the movie or read the novel. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, so with agile techniques, uh, you want or tend to develop in small controllable units. Uh, you test things until no errors are detected, which means that, which doesn't mean that there are no errors. It's just you are not detecting those. But some <laughs> normally is a, is a, is a, is, a, is a good things. And when you're happy, you move on on the next stage of development. And it turned out that Nextflow allowed us to do exactly that. And and it was so uh, you know so maybe so naive, but was so. Uh, funny to, to realize that after a few months of Nextflow pipeline development, we, we found ourselves having the exact the same habit as software development, but just with workflows, which I don't think is something you know we, we could have seen like a few years before uh, or a few years ago. So everything is processes are, are, are really the processes, Nextflow processes are small controllable units. Uh, you control what gets in and what gets out. The whole framework, check for failures, allow you to manage failures, allow to, you to, to, de to, to decide which kind of failures you want to accept or you don't want to accept. You can change and you can resume your workflows without you know, spending time in uh, rerunning stuff that was already fine. And when happy, you can move on and, add another, and you can add another process. And so basically, uh, since we are completely on the cloud, we, we develop things locally on our laptop using Docker, by containers, by Conda, of course. And the, the nice thing is that as soon as we go through uh, this development cycle in which we, we start with the pipeline, we start with the process, we test it, we are fine, it's working, no errors, we move on, we add another process, and etc. As soon as we arrive in the end, it's basically production ready. And when, when, once we realized that, we were very, very happy. As, because, I mean, from moving from here, to here, for us, it's just, just testing and deployment. Deployment is a, is, a no, is a zero effort for us because it's all managed by AWS and Nextflow. And testing, yeah, we test stuff. And I have, uh, I have a slide in the end you know, to, to, to maybe start discussing a bit more about testing. But really, for us, this, this jump is, is, uh, has become really, really short. And for us, is a is a is a is a is a game changer because we gain time and we 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 you know we have less less uh, pain. Of course, uh, when we started to, to develop, and you know th this this can you know can start in in, in many many ways. Uh, and of course, uh, we 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 learned some lessons along the way. Uh, so we started with uh, monolithic containers at first, uh, which you know in retrospective is is. At least for us, it is, was not a good idea uh, because uh, it prevented decoupling uh, you, you, and testing, and everything get, gets more and more complicated. And so we started progressively to decouple things. And we started from this huge container, which, OK, all my pipeline is my container is perfect, to have you know, my pipeline is done by, I don't know, 20 processes, and I have uh, 10 containers, which is, is more re reasonable for us. Uh, and you know it goes exactly in the same direction, so the pipeline uh, became more and more general, so we could reuse some components of our pipelines in other pipelines, and also the number of unnecessary next next flow acts drop down with time. I, I mean, you all are familiar about you know this this ugly, nasty things you do at the beginning when you are not familiar with how channels work, and how you combine them, and why a channel is not working, and etc. Uh, which, of course, goes in, you know, in more, f more and more familiarization with the framework itself. So to start wrapping up, um, the good thing we have, we have seen in this year and a half adoption of Nextflow and the, the AWS batch in the company and in the bioinformatics team, um, the, the very good things are Nextflow process isolation, which, of course, go in hand in hand with containerization and, and, and batch on the cloud, which is fantastic to test and to, to debug, especially when things are not are failing or are not working properly. Um, portability and deployment. So as I was mentioning, we develop locally uh, and we can have exactly the same environment as that we use on the cloud. And it's, it's fantastic because when things fail on the cloud and sometimes they fail on the cloud, we can revert back and we have exactly the same, the same environment. And we try to, to see if this is something, you know, 
due just to the difference between your testing small test set and your large production data set, or there is some, something else going on. And caching, caching is fantastic, is one of the features, of course, we love the most in Nextflow, and is in wor is, it is working very, very well with, with AWS and S3 uh, as well. And uh, of course, the whole, uh, having the whole computing, uh, cloud computing backend with batch and Nextflow that takes care of all the plumbing and moving data uh, from, uh, from local to S3 to S3 to the containers and, and back when the data, when the, the computation is finished is, is, is fantastic, really. The weird things, caching. Caching is, is a bit controversial <laughs> uh, because uh, we have experienced sometimes, you know, uh, just a you know, few minutes after a, a workflow is, is finished, sometimes, I mean, some successful process restart, uh, a rerun, even if we are pretty sure we haven't absolutely changed anything in the scripts, anything in the workflow's description, we don't know, we really don't know why. And it's probably, we think, something that is dependent on um, when you do some splitting things where you have a huge input and then you split it in, you know, thousands of small jobs. Sometimes there is a small percentage of those jobs that gets rerun. It's probably depending on the way if it is splitting, but it's more a feeling we haven't had the, the time to test it yet. Um, and of course, when you have very large workflows with thousands of jobs running through cache can take a bit of time, even if uh, reading on S3 is, is, quite, is, quite, uh, is quite quick in that case. Uh, sometimes managing multiple channels when they have different elements and size can, can, be, can, be, can be weird or non-intuitive, at, uh, at least at the beginning. Uh, so you have to use to mix like uh, using first uh, or collect to make sure uh, things are running properly. Um, and ooh, oops, sorry. And when uh, when we are using uh, S3 as our published dir, uh, so the final repository of our, of our data, and we have a lot, really thousands of files to move. Which this is already an open issue on Nextflow. Uh, we have seen that is taking a lot of time. It's probably depending on the way API calls are submitted to S3. And of course, the weird thing is, yeah, you need to get past some initial complicate moment uh, when, you, when you start learning Nextflow and adopting Nextflow in a, in a, in a team that has not any, any, any previous experience with that. And of course, you, ne you need to, have to spend a bit of time in setting up and familiarizing with AWS and Batch. I think people on the Gitter channel, we have discussed many times how, how to start with a, with a small test uh, configuration in AWS Batch and then expand to a more production uh, configuration style. And these are two really interesting points for me. So the, the, I, I said they're almost missing because of course there is something in this, in this, uh, in this regard. Um, what would be really cool to have is more composability of workflows. Of course, Flowcraft is definitely going in this, in this direction. But what we have uh, done and what we do often, too often probably, is not the best practice, is that we do a lot of copy and paste between processes. And this has to stop because we start from the idea and says, okay, I have done already this in that pipeline, it's just copy and paste and it works and it doesn't work because you are in a different context, because your input is slightly different, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that is something we need, to, we need to think about, I think, in terms of you know, <laughs> community. Yeah. And unit test for workflows. This is another key point. Um, uh, we, we internally, we, we need to qualify pipelines uh, 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 with quality systems, so we need to check our, work, our workflows with test data. Uh, NFCore, introduce some, some pipeline testing with, with continuous integration. What would be really, really amazing would be to have a common unit test framework for Nextflow, which will allow also a more fine-grained test to be put in into and check each process and not, not only the pipeline has a whole, which it's, it's okay, it's what we do also, but more fine-grained controls would be, would be just, just amazing. Okay, so that's it. Um, it went very, very well in the end. There was some pain involved, but it went very well. We went from, from zero to full production next flow on, on the cloud in just a few months. Um, we really, literally, we do not care anymore about, about workflow executions, analysis scale out and infrastructure, which is amazing because like just two years ago, we spent like a good 40% of our time as bioinformatician in a small, in a small company to deal with infrastructure problems and etc. Now it's completely gone. We're just, you know, 
10% is infrastructure, which means you know, setting up your configuration on AWS properly. And then the rest is just focusing on data analysis and try to, to, to develop the best fit for the purpose pipelines. So in the end, yeah, way, way less pain than before. <laughs> so I would like to, to thank everyone in Enterom and particularly the informatics team who followed me in this, in this journey, <laughs> of this migration journey, the next world community, the sponsor and the organizer. And I take any questions if I still have some time left. Thank you. Oh.